Okay, lightning bolts for batteries. Let's do this. Okay. A total of 173 terawatts of solar energy strikes to Earth continuously. A bolt of lightning could power a house for three days. There's energy all around us. But the challenge comes from how we harness that energy in safe, sustainable, and scalable ways. Energy storage is the key to achieving high levels of renewable energy, powering our homes, communities, and transportation. Through long duration energy storage, we can transition to net zero power in affordable, reliable, and efficient ways. So what is the future of our prime energy storage method? I mean, I, it's batteries, but like really good ones. The world is heading more towards renewable energy sources and tech has followed with important innovations like electric vehicles. But as production increases in technology using renewable energy, renewable energy storage must respond. EVs, as we call it in the biz, and other emerging tech have to be able to meet the demands of everyday life on a large scale. The batteries of the future need increasingly longer duration capacity to prevent things like intermittent power outages. And this must be done in an environmentally friendly, ethical, and economical way. So first, how does it all work? I, I, I think Peter knows, cause, cause I don't. Okay, so I, I should talk about batteries. If you have solar and renewables, you need to be able to back up this intermittent resource with some sort of an energy storage. I think it's a 30% of California homes are now have some sort of a solar facility on their home. That's fantastic. Wouldn't be amazing if that excess energy that you're producing during the day gets stored in some sort of a medium so that you can actually use it when it's needed. Unfortunately, where we are right now is you can try to buy an energy storage solution and it's madly expensive. It almost costs you the same amount as buying a, a Tesla car. It doesn't make any sense. Companies need to A, reduce the price significantly by, I'm not kidding, by half. And companies need to make these batteries safer from fires, whether it's at home or on the utility scale. So for renewables to work uh, in the foreseeable future, we desperately need storage solutions. When we talk about electrochemical batteries in the terms of renewable energy storage, we're talking about lithium ion batteries. The way a lithium ion battery works is, uh, Steve, Stephen K, you, you take this. My name is Stephen K. I'm the chief technology officer for uh, our next energy. At its most basic, a battery is a device for storing electric charge. Inside the battery, you have two different materials, your, your positive electrode or a cathode and your negative electrode or anode. So when you charge the battery, electrons are pulled from that cathode and transferred to the anode through an external circuit. At the same time, positively charged ions from that cathode are passed through a separator inside the battery through the anode. And so this simultaneous passage of uh, electrons and ions is how you're storing energy. Then if you hook up the battery to an external circuit, your phone, a light, your car, the electrons flow through that external circuit and that powers that external device. As we move towards a more electrified world, our problems begin when we start to scale up battery production, specifically from the elements within our batteries, lithium, nickel, and cobalt. How we get them, how much we need, and the toll it takes financially and environmentally, as well as the human toll. There are several metals that are currently high price and or very difficult to procure. Cobalt comes from conflict regions such as DR Congo. It's a very difficult region. A lot of people have reported on the atrocities that happen in the region. A new CBS News investigation exposes the connection between child labor in Africa and products many of us use every day. Amnesty International revealed in 2016 that children were mining cobalt in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC. Nickel did not used to be as much of a problem, uh, but now with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Russia being majority of the world's nickel supply in the world, 
uh, obviously this creates a massive strain on the nickel market. There's a lot of work being done to make batteries greener, more ethical, safer, more affordable, and longer lasting. One way of improving batteries is by changing the materials we use for them. One company, well, one, the company is called One, is trying to double the range of electric vehicles, use safer, more sustainable raw materials, and establish a local supply chain. One of the important ways they're doing this is through lithium iron phosphate batteries that are 10,000 times more plentiful than traditional lithium batteries that rely on cobalt and nickel. Steve, tell us more about it. Lithium iron phosphate is a, a very different material, it uses slightly lower energy density, but a lot more durable and much lower cost. One of our big focuses is moving to zero cobalt cathode materials. It's an inherently safer chemistry than a nickel manganese cobalt. The reason for that is because they don't uh, have a, as much of a presence of oxygen in the cells, which makes it less flammable as an electrolyte. Another exciting development in energy storage comes from battery recycling, like the work being done at Ascend Elements. I think Roger Lin has something to say about this. Batteries, especially lithium ion batteries, aren't, aren't widely recycled just yet. Um, they are recyclable, however. We're not just extracting the cobalt out of it, we're actually extracting all the valuable metals uh, out of the lithium ion battery and then recycling them um, by uh, elevating them to the highest level of value in the battery supply chain into something called cathode active material. We're going to enable um, ubiquitous recycling. The, the battery will be so valuable um, that it would be unthinkable to throw it away. Well, that old battery, if it's not recycled, will likely end up in a landfill somewhere. And I um, mean, these batteries, they do have uh, typically some charge remaining in them uh, that could short circuit and cause a fire. Some toxic chemicals and materials inside which could contaminate and pollute the environment. So we really don't want them sitting in landfill. And so batteries contain a lot of, um, a lot of different metals and elements that are of, uh, of critical importance. All those things come out at the bottom of, uh, of the shredding process, but we keep what's called the black mass. And then it contains things like the lithium, the nickel, the cobalt, uh, the graphite, um, all the most valuable pieces. So this process can be repeated over and over again, you know, the biggest hit against an EV from a carbon footprint perspective is actually the battery itself. Critical minerals, metals, elements in there that need to be mined, they need to be extracted from the earth, that, that cannot be avoided. In terms of hopeful for the future, absolutely, we're nowhere near maxed out. I think historically there's been somewhere like 5 to 7% per year improvement in energy density. I, I expect that's going to continue for quite a while. For the battery industry, um, things look very positive. We're just a huge expansion of capacity of growth in the industry uh, because of the growing acceptance of electric vehicles. Battery costs have declined over 80%, and we think the cost of the batteries will be going down by another half or more in the next five years. You have improving chemistry. These massive gigafactories produced in China, Korea, now starting to have them in the United States, fully automated, big scale processes, equipment that will drive economies of scale. Advances in energy storage technology have made batteries a key component for the future of transportation. Whether in EVs or our homes, we need energy storage technology for our future.